Welcome. My name is Stefan Durkon. I'm director of the Center for the Study of African Economies. We are here with Paul Collier and Louis Gasekende to remember, but also to celebrate the amazing achievements that Ben Ondulu has made and also the contributions he has made to development of the economies of Africa and beyond. Benno unfortunately died on the 22nd of February. We were all very taken by his loss, but I think a commitment was made by many of us to focus on his legacy and to actually try to make sure that people, not least younger colleagues that may not have known him or uh, throughout his period, that they realize what an amazing man he was and what a committed servant a public servant of African development he was. So uh, we have Louis Kasekende. Louis is the former deputy governor of the Bank of Uganda. He's a former chief economist also of the African Development Bank and a former executive director of the World Bank. And uh, we also have Paul Collier. Paul is professor of economics and public policy at the University of Oxford, the Latin School of Government. He's uh, a director of the International Growth Center, founding director of the Center for the Study of African Economies, and um, a former director also of the research department in the World Bank. At various times in their careers, they have known Benno, but I also know very well they've known him as a dear friend. And I just would like first maybe to let Lewis um, briefly reflect on how he first came across Benno and any memories from that period. And then I will ask Paul the same question, and then we'll talk a little bit about his uh, Benno's career and different phases and contributions. Yes, uh, uh, let me start by thanking you, Stefan, uh, for organizing this uh, almost an informal chat on someone many of us call called a great friend. I mean, I met Benno in the late 80s. Um, I had just come back uh, from my postgraduate studies in uh, the UK and joined the central bank in, uh, in the research department. We were invited to, to Nairobi to discuss research. And in more, at the time, it was more focused on capacity building in universities and promoting uh, research in, uh, in universities. I, I happened to tag along. And that's when I first met uh, uh, Benno. I met someone that uh, I think over the years, my impression of Benno is that uh, he had this very beautiful uh, brain, a very, a very um, one can say a very gifted person, a very gifted uh, economist, uh, a, a, a person with a, a very good heart, someone who talked and reached out uh, across generations, someone who has inspired many over the years. Now, these were the early days of nation of uh, the African um, Economic uh, uh, Research Consortium. And to put it in perspective, this is also the time when a number of countries were also implementing structural adjustment policies. So we would always spend time and talk about the appropriateness of uh, structural adjustment policies, where these being forced on uh, African countries. And uh, you could see someone who wanted to promote, even at the, those early stages, ownership of policies that we should be in a discussion. We should not have people who come with briefcases and they read out something and say, you must do this, you must do that. So that's the Benno I met. And that's the Benno I have known uh, over the years. I've known him as a, a brilliant academic. I've known him as a policymaker, as a governor. And I'll be coming back to those issues at a later stage. Thank you, Lewis. Paul. Yeah, I, I first got to know Benno. Um, in the early 80s in Dar es Salaam. And um, I was doing a, a study um, on the coffee boom in East Africa. And um, it was comparative of Tanzania and Kenya. And so I was anxious to be working with um, uh, economists at the university uh, in Dar es Salaam in Nairobi. And uh, I'd already been working 
in Dar es Salaam at the university for quite a while by then. Um, and Sam Wangwe, the head of the department, economics department, um, the department was just emerging from a period when it had been dominated by sort of um, Marxist thinking. And it was sort of moving into sort of, if you like, modern economics. Um, and Sam said, yeah, I've got a really bright spark to introduce you to. Um, he's, got a good, he's got a good work. And uh, he's just come back from Northwestern University. And there was this young man um, who was just fired up with eagerness, with ideas, with analytic ability, with energy to actually get things done, to get some research done, some proper research. And it was it was fantastic experience. And so we really got on. Um, and uh, uh, Ben had started to reveal something that he has always had since, which is a generosity of spirit where he wants to build a, a team of people who actually um, acquire this competence and confidence and ability to use economics. And that theme of actually growing a team of people able to do things, that really was the consistent thread of his career and that's the model um, that needs to to last and last and last and grow and grow and grow so that's where i first got to know and then um like lewis um i became part of the african economic Concert research consortium which was this fantastic thing that benno just built in the same spirit of we we african economists we need to get on top of all this economics so that we can do our own thinking because we know context so much better than these guys who are flying in from Washington on a plane. We've got to be able to do our own thinking. And that was the spirit that infused the NERC. It was a, it was a privilege to be part of that. Thank you, Paul. It makes me think of, in a very different way, how I first met Benno which was as a PhD student sitting in Dar es Salaam trying to find any government official willing to talk to me uh, about what was happening in agricultural markets and grain markets. And um, of course, this was the time, late 1980s, of still considerable rationing and there was not very much to be found. Um, so occasionally I would also be quite tired and would go into the British Council, which was the only place with air conditioning. And I had wanted to meet Benner for a long time, but phone calls was pretty difficult at the time to find, to find anyone. And there he was sitting, reading, I think it was the Financial Times, quietly. And so I got all my courage together to just briefly say hello. And I just, the one thing I remember is this big smile and generosity of spirit. Now we had just a brief conversation because I was already then too starstruck because he was the big man, the big thinker in the country. Um, and to actually ask him just a few questions. And I just will never forget this because that was a difficult period to get anyone to talk to, to, to anyone. And I was nobody. And he was just very happy to have a brief conversation on the economy. And, uh, and I still remember it. Lewis, um, you knew Benno, of course, then from that period uh, very well. You know, you mentioned already the African Economic Research Consortium, Paul mentioned as well. Um, so tell me a little bit of, of uh, the kind of memories you have of the kind of issues and the, the stance he would take. You know, you mentioned discussions about structural adjustment and so on. And so what, what any, any recollections you can have on that time of the themes that he was like promoting and thinking and, and how did he think that ownership could be achieved, which you so correctly put that he always uh, favored? Yeah, actually, um... It's interesting that you bring out that, and I would like to share this. Um, there was, at the time, a lot of discussion on, uh, on uh, the appropriateness of uh, devaluations. Uh, should, it be, should countries just move to market-determined uh, exchange rates? Should countries maybe over time, uh, what time will you give it for these countries to eliminate distortions in, um, 
in the foreign exchange market. And most of the African countries at the time uh, had uh, parallel markets. And I recall Beno being part of a team of economists, uh, some of them from the University of Dar es Salaam and others, I think, from the Ministry of uh, Finance in Tanzania, putting up a, a great debate. And even to the point where they were invited to Washington to make a presentation uh, to, to, to the IMF. And I think just like uh, Paul said, it is that promotion of ownership of, uh, of policies, that promotion of linking research to policy making. I think those are some of the things and traits will always, always remember about Beno. But I should also underscore one other point. When Beno believed in something, he was never shy of bringing out that particular point. However unpopular the point would be, uh, for all the years I've known him, we would always get into debates and Beno would speak his mind. You could even have a debate over maybe two, three weeks but he would be stuck and uh, you needed to go and do your own research. He's a person who always liked to review numbers. He's a person who would always like to read books. And uh, I think that is the way he played that role of nurturing many and touching many and also strengthening uh, policymaking teams in Africa. Mm. Paul, you, um, in the period uh, that you knew Benno uh, when he was um, director of the ARC, you also launched this uh, important study around um, the political economy of growth in Africa. And Benno, of course, was the leading person of this, this work at the time. Tell me a bit more about that work. Yeah, I mean, that became huge. I mean, the, uh, the, the Cambridge um, study on the... Uh, political economy of Africa, major major um, books, and um, and with a very big cast of of, of researchers, um, uh, uh, African and non-African. So um, and and it was political economy as well as straight economic. So you've got um, you know uh, great economists like uh, Steve O'Connor. You've got. Um, um, Steve O'Connor, you've got uh, political scientist um, Bob, Rob, Bob, Robert Bates of Harvard played a major role uh, in, in this. And I remember us um, periodically meeting as this, this great team and uh, forging together the, the idea that it was very exciting. It was, it was just great. Um, and, um, and so it was, it was you know, Ben at his best, just stimulating this flow of discussion and uh, crystallizing these ideas, which then um, became an important, really big study. Um, so that was that was just great. But, but I just wanted to come back to one of the legacies of his period at ARC was some people who became really very prominent in in public policy in Africa. I mean. Um, uh, Lewis himself has just been replaced as uh, succeeded as, as, as deputy governor by Michael Atingiego. Well, you know, where did Michael Atingiego um, learn his uh, you know, learn his ideas through the AERC? I remember him presenting papers and better scrutinizing it, and getting discussions going. You know, um, or of course, um, uh, Governor Saludo, former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Um, uh, so there the, were the people who just emerged around the continent um, with that just that, that ability to look at the data, think about it analytically, um, work something out, and as Lewis just said, um, then fearlessly um, uh, uh, put forward a, a, a view. Um, which was informed both by the analytics and by the data and by knowledge of context. And that's what, what, what Benno ignited and it spread across a big group. The AERC became a big group. Um, yes, so we then, um, uh, after that, um, uh, I moved to the World Bank and lo and behold, so did Benno. Um, um, it was, uh, so that was an extraordinary um, 
times, I think for both of us really, um, there we found ourselves in Washington. And um, uh, um, I was um, director of the research department and Benno was the um, research administrator uh, in, um, in, in, um, in, 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 the, in the front office of the, of the chief economist, um, which is a very important job. And so Benno was basically shaping the um, direction of the of the research funding, which uh, which projects should go ahead, and so forth. Um, so it was really very important job, um, and uh, so the two of us were there for you know quite a few years, um, and uh, and Benno actually sort of used that period not just to know the World Bank, but to get some roots, I think, in, in Washington um, and connections with, uh, with, with economists more broadly in, in the United States. Of course, he had his education at Northwestern, so um, in many ways he was better adapted to America than I was. Um, but, uh, and, and, then, and then, Lewis, did you overlap when you, when you went to the World Bank? Yes, I was there. Um... At the time, I was uh, an executive uh, director, and you can see that Beno continued with the, especially those themes that touch on growth, those themes that touch on uh, development of Africa, poverty reduction in, uh, in Africa. It even reminds me uh, of uh, a publication that came out of AERC during the, must have been early 1990s uh, on uh, can Africa claim the 21st century? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, it is. It is really bringing back hope to to a situation where some people thought African economies were a basket case. I mean, having those people who are doing the analytics and bringing back hope to a point where someone says Africa can actually claim. Um, yeah, he did that with Ibrahim al Badawi, and we should acknowledge Ibrahim's role yeah. in this. That they were a fantastic double act. It was a wonderful pairing, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's very striking that um, you know we've picked up a lot of reactions of people that have worked in the World Bank of how many people he touched there across the whole organization. It's also still important to mention that he was the most senior African ever in the research department in the World Bank. And it's this kind of real role that uh, a lot of um, of other African economists in the World Bank look up of him. And, and I was very struck by, by all the reactions of it because he was like a pathfinder in that sense of, of uh, just as he did with ARC, also in the World Bank, he was a, a somehow a vanguard of, of, of a whole new generation coming in, uh, in there. Um, and, and also we should acknowledge uh, roles he played working uh, indirectly or directly for the World Bank, for example, in South Africa, where he's still incredibly fondly remembered and uh, the economic team even today will remember the role that he played as an excellent broker and, 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 and clear mind in, uh, in, in these crucial periods in, in, in South Africa. Um, of course, then he became uh, a governor uh, of the well, the central bank governor in Tanzania, which um, he did, of course, highly successfully. But, Louis, tell me a bit of how he was as a governor. Yeah, I mean, um, <clears throat> he, he again uh, excelled. Uh, when you look at especially uh, the East African region, there were a number of things that were being discussed by uh, the central banks. The shift from uh, uh, non-market-based policies to market-based uh, policies, and especially uh, monetary policy based on uh, uh, market policies. And you can see Beno again, sitting with colleagues, looking at the capacity building within central banks, and sitting with colleagues, guiding that process of pushing central banks to market-based policies, sitting with colleagues and looking into all issues of supervision, monitoring, how do we react? Should it be coordinated reaction of, of, of banks? Because as you move to market-based policies, there's also speculation in these markets and these are very thin uh, markets. And you can see Beno taking the lead on uh, coordination of those policies. 
There was also the whole talk and uh, not only talk, but the decision that we would move to a single currency. And uh, the central banks did a number of, uh, of, of studies and uh, th these were discussed uh, uh, at the East African level. Uh, and Benno again uh, was a, a star performer. These are not easy things of saying five countries come together and move to uh, a single currency. So if you were to make an assessment of uh, how prepared the region is, I think there is Benno's performance and Benno's mark, Benno's views in that preparedness of uh, moving on to a single currency. And uh, the record of Tanzania is there to show in terms of the reserve build up uh, in Tanzania, in terms of the very low inflation uh, in, uh, in Tanzania, in terms of the depths of uh, markets. Uh, for those who were there in the eighties, when you go back in 2020, you, you see that transformation within the financial sector and other sectors of, uh, of the economy. Yeah, I think it is, and, and Bruno was, told me how he, how proud he was of the depth of capabilities that he managed to build within the central bank. So his talk was not about what he'd done, it was about that there was a team of people. He felt um, that he could safely step down because there was such a wealth of, of talent to succeed him. Um, and um, and that, was, uh, that was very um, uplifting, you know? Um, and I, I, he brought me in to the, celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Central Bank. And, um, and that, was, that was, again, it was a very moving occasion with the great and the good across um, Tanzania and East Africa assembled to celebrate this 50th anniversary um, with, with, with Benno um, orchestrating, but not um, hogging the glory, you know. Um, uh, I had a, uh, a conversation I'll never forget with Benno um, when the, the new president came in uh, uh, um, of Tanzania and um, Benno by then um, was genuinely exhausted um, and uh, wanted to step down from central bank governorship. And I urged him, and I think a lot of his other friends urged him, that now was not the time to step down because the new president um, needed uh, guidance. And that in many ways, his core job as the central bank governor um, was to uh, build a, a a relationship with the, the president and um, and get him to try and um, uh, essentially understand the basics of economic policy. And uh, I remember Benno um, heaving a sigh and realizing that that was his duty to his country. And that's what he did. And he told me later, it's sometimes it was you know, spending eight hours a day with the president um, uh, uh, and, uh, and he did that for a long time. It was a heroic thing to do. Um, it was exactly what um, uh, um, Emmanuel Mutabili Tumasima had done that in, in, in Uganda um, with, with building a relationship with President Museveni. Um, uh, and it was that, 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 that ability to, to work with a, 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 a political leader. Um, and took a lot of courage and a lot of tact. Um, so that was, um, and, then, and then finally, as an Israel central bank governor, and of course you as, as well, as we both saw this, I, I convened uh, a meeting of central bank governors, African central bank governors, which was going for 12 years now. And Benno was the unquestioned uh, doyen uh, of that event. Um, um, uh, he would never hog the event, but people listened to what he was saying, and he would always be participating in, in open discussion, 
and full of ideas. Um, so it was a, it was a remarkable um, uh, uh, annual um, uh, display of Benno at his best of doing these discussions. Um, so that was, uh, that was an ongoing thing where he'll be very sadly missed. Um, um, but you know as well as I do there, uh, Lewis, that uh, he was such a powerful contributor. So the, um, I, I, I find it striking, Paul, in the way you describe, and it's definitely how in the last few years I've, I've got to know him um, much better. Um, it, it is this combination of this, um, this trusted steady hand. Uh, what Lewis emphasized, Beno never does groupthink. He thinks, and he will say how it is and how he thinks about it. But at the same time, this utmost calm diplomacy uh, and recognizing that he's there as an advisor. He's not necessarily a decision maker in many things in the way he dealt with presidents and very senior people. And it's this role that he played uh, quietly in Tanzania, of course, you know, this, uh, because uh, as Louis says, the, the records is quite remarkable and quite unnoticed, which is probably credit to Benno and exactly in his style. You know, exactly. nobody noticed, but Tanzania grew fast, was a steady economy, and then the president inherited a country that actually had boomed in a remarkable way. I remember as chief economist of Diffit looking at the numbers before a trip, and I thought, hmm, did they get the wrong country here? Because I couldn't quite remember that this would be kind of a a stable growing economy that seemed to be quite well run uh, in that sense. And that's a lot of credit to Benno, also not to try to get a limelight for it. And then, and, and he, he, but he should get a credit as both of you, uh, both of you say. Um, one thing that I found fascinating when I got to know him, and um, it's in the last few years I worked with him around issues to do with the digital economy, and, and, and alternative growth prospects from that in, in Africa. And of course, Benno was a central player in this whole issue in his country around as the regulator of digital finance and being very imaginative and very inventive. And it's again, a regulatory model around that, that um, oh. is quite unique because it, it is actually one that made sure there could be quite a lot of competition. It wouldn't be captured as in some countries, say by one company to do all the digital finance part. And it was just very cleverly done because it's quietly, but it's actually quite a, a, a beauty in terms of, of, of how he managed so early on to convene this. I don't know, Lewis, whether from where you were sitting, uh, whether there's other things on the kind of detail and the, the, the specifics, uh, that 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 Benno would focus on, maybe on the digital side or others that that you that you remember um, from him. Yeah, oh yes, um, on the digital side, uh, I remember. Um, I think it must have been uh, around two thousand and eight, uh, two thousand and nine. Uh, we always had those concerns of what should be the role of uh, the central bank. Central banks are known for regulatory role, but in the case of digital finance, the central banks had to play a, a dual role. On one hand, it is the promotion, and on the other hand, it is the regulatory. And it needed that careful balance. I know Kenya took the lead uh, in this direction, but uh, Benno was there following and uh, getting to, to work in terms of how do you carefully balance a promotional role, which is played by the central bank in digital finance. And I think he was totally sold that leveraging technology, promoting digitization is going to help with financial inclusion, reaching at the bottom of, uh, of the pyramid and uh, worked with others to see that uh, the central bank does not in any way fully constrain the development of digital finance, but it should not abdicate the role it is supposed to play of regulation. You should not have uh, place or overemphasize regulation to a point where you stop development of such a critical area. And I think where we, we are now, 
as East Africa, there is a better understanding of the role of uh, especially mobile money uh, at the moment. There is a better appreciation of the role that can be played by leveraging technology. And I, I think there are now many more followers. Uh, you had those who were uh, in the forefront. And uh, I, I think when the history is finally written, we will have to say thank you to the Kenyans and thank you to the Tanzanians in terms of showing us the way. Mm. I, I... Maybe uh, one other um, uh, area, but this is something because I may not have another opportunity that I wish to flag is that Ben was also very concerned about the sustainability of AERC. AERC has been supported a lot by, by donors. And Benno was trying to see that there is a transition, some shared responsibility between the Africans as a stakeholder group and the donors. And he organized the governor's forum uh, when he was a governor. And now we have a number of central banks that are making a contribution to AERC, it is showing also enhanced ownership of the African stakeholder. I thought I should also plug that. Thank you. Excellent. So let, let me on, on the comment finally on the on the, on this these ideas around the digital economy. That you know the way I'd worked with him is that he was so passionate about it. He, in fact, until uh, days before he unfortunately died. Um, he was working on a paper on digital taxation and to try to get, you know, how would you do it actually in a sensible way in a resource constrained environment like Africa, where you could not do it maybe in the in a sophisticated way as it, as it may be happening. And he was so convinced that the digital side and being so forward looking is that, that there is all that future. And he was never a man of the past. He was always looking forward because that's what I had uh, overall think of it in, in Tanzania. He was thinking of how do I get Tanzania to move forward in the growth path in ARC. He was thinking of how do we build up the capability of economists in Africa to, to own their own, own future in the central bank. He set a very steady um, trajectory for, for growth for the country. And it's, it's actually very striking is that he wasn't just a commentator, as often people are, as even economists are, on the present. He was always thinking, where can this go? Where can this go to next? What, where, where do we need to go? And I think that's definitely, for me, the, a, a strong abiding memory of that. There's this man that talks in a very unassuming way. Sometimes he will, in his public speaking, uh, he was talking often very softly, very clever technique to make sure everybody was listening carefully. And he would say not with massive gesticulation or with uh, uh, lots of intonation uh, in, in different directions. It was all quite steady. But then you start listening about it. It was actually, you know, no, I'm telling you something you better listen to because it matters for you for the future. It matters to you how you think and so on. And, um, you know, that's definitely something I, I will, uh, will always uh, remember very well. Maybe I should, uh, to close, offer you the chance to say something finally. So maybe, Paul, anything anything finally to add? I think I want to end on a note that Benno was indeed very much focused on the future. Um, and that's why his example really does need to live on. We need Benno's sense of the future. So I'd done a, a little book um, called The Future of Capitalism. Capital two or three years ago, um, which became quite influential. And um, so the Oxford Review of Economic Policy journal um, uh, gave, gave me the opportunity to co-edit a special issue of the, of the journal um, on the future of capitalism. Um, and uh, we got the, the world's top economists from completely around the world, uh, each to agree to write a, uh, an essay for this volume on the future of capitalism. And of course, I included Benno in this, um, and one of the saddest emails I ever got, it was one of the last I got from, uh, from Benno, was from his hospital bed to say, I've been working on this 
now, whilst I'm hospitalized, I realize I just can't do it. I just can't do it. I'm going to have to stop. Um, but Benno has stopped working on the future of capitalism, but Benno would really want uh, a new generation of Africans to step up to the plate and themselves think about and shape the future of capitalism. And that is Benno living on his example, the example to follow. Thank you. Benno was a visionary. Uh, we should accept that. I think uh, he's nurtured uh, many people. He has mentored very many people. And I think if one has to look at uh, a legacy, it is that contribution that uh, he has made, especially to young economists, uh, building the capacity of the future economic leaders in Africa. By the time of uh, his days, you are, there are people who had become governors, there are people who had become ministers, people who had become vice chancellors, but there are many more who are at different stages uh, in their career. And I think that is what Benno did. And if there is anything we can do is to continue the nurturing, mentoring of, uh, of uh, young economists. That is what will make growth, development, poverty, alleviation sustainable in, uh, in Africa. Luis Kaskende, Paul Cody, thank you very much for the contribution. Thank you.